Michael Burry slams the White House as he predicts. An even deeper crash is coming. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And famed hedge fund manager Michael Burry, who bet big and won on the housing crisis, took on the White House this week as he says things by the end of the year are going to get much worse. Let's head over to Insider. We picked today's story up as big short investor Michael Burry slams the White House for denying a recession is looming and sounds the alarm on inflation, credit card debt, and labor shortages. Michael Burry, the fund manager of the big short fame, accused the Biden administration of moving the goalposts on what constitutes a recession and denying the U.S. economy is days away from officially being one. The White House would like you to redefine a recession as one in which consumers are not borrowing on credit cards, he says, to pay for inflation, and neither is a labor force inadequate for the size of the economy. GDP was out on Thursday, and he says not that there's anything wrong with that. And sure enough, what did we find out? The GDP fell 0.9% in the second quarter for the second straight decline and a strong recession signal. Now, I don't know about the strong signal here. It is just two quarters, and it is fairly mild in terms of the big picture. It indicates a slowdown at this point. It doesn't mean a recession is coming. It may not, but what we are seeing is other indicators are by far suggesting the probabilities of recession are rising. But when we look at the data here, is it consistent where we see periods of high inflation leading to a slowdown in the economy? Well, there are. And let's take a look at this chart of the consumer price index in blue on a year over year rate of change against the gross domestic product also on a year-over-year -year rate of change. And you'll note where I highlighted yellow periods of rising inflation, you see the red heading down, slowing growth, rising inflation, slowing growth, rising inflation, growth is slowing. Again, rising inflation followed by slowing growth. And what is the story here? It's not that higher consumer prices are the issue because that seems to be the issue. And it doesn't matter prices go up. What matters and why we see growth slow is because wage Wages don't keep up with inflation. That's the real issue. Prices could be a lot higher as long as wages are too. It's no big deal. But what we see every time, at least in modern history, is wages aren't keeping pace. The White House went on to brush off recession fears in its post. It pointed to real income, real meaning inflation adjusted income growing despite high inflation, which we will challenge here momentarily. And thanks to a historically strong labor market and ample household savings. Burry's tweet indicates he took particular issue with that argument and for good reason, because when we look at real or again, inflation adjusted disposable personal income, this is what's left after everything is spent is negative, meaning consumers actually don't don't have as much money, they're not keeping up with inflation, and by a long shot, they're falling behind, and it makes perfect sense because, as Burry indicated in the beginning of this article, is that people are using their credit cards, and it makes perfect sense because the initial way consumers deal with inflation is by charging in the hopes that their wages are gonna rise up. When they don't, and they eventually get these big credit card bills, they cut their spending. Hasn't happened yet, but probably coming really soon. Let's continue on. Because Burry goes on to say that his views appear to be that Americans are racking up credit card debt to cover rising living costs, which we know they are, and unemployment is low because the economy has outgrown the national workforce. His tweet also suggests he expects GDP data on Thursday to confirm the economy is in a recession, and technically we are, and he sees the White House blog post as an attempt to deflect the impending wave of criticism. The investor and financial historian has previously warned that consumers are saving less, borrowing more, and on track to virtually exhaust their savings by Christmas as they contend with higher food, fuel, and housing costs. And let's tackle one of those issues there in particular is a slowdown in consumer spending because a lot of those issues are actually pretty relevant. We're seeing consumers save less because they have less. They're, they're running behind on inflation and so they charge more and they draw down their savings. That makes perfect sense. But what about the economy? Well, let's continue on because he anticipates the resulting slump in consumer spending coupled with retailers slashing prices to get rid of excess inventory will reduce inflation is sack sap economic growth later this year and we've already seen companies draw bringing their prices down we heard that from of course walmart here recently and now let's take a look at current new orders 
from the Philly Fed against advanced retail sales. And what you see is that as new orders trend down, what you'll notice on a year over year rate of change, you see retail sales slow. And as new orders rise, well, that means sales are usually rising. And then of course, as new orders fall, sales fall. So what it tells us is that as new orders go down, and this makes a lot of sense, because if you're a business and you're ordering new supply and new stock, new inventory, what does it suggest? That you have either a shortage of inventory or that the demand is so strong for your inventory that you need to get more. And of course, what happens when and they cut their inventory is simply, or cut their new orders, it's because inventory is building up or demand is falling away. And we see that here as new orders fall. What does that mean for retail sales? That's right, they're headed down. And how about inventories? Well, you tend to see the same thing. As new orders slow, now we'll have retailer inventories up on a year-over-year -year rate change in red. And why would a retailer slow its inventory? Why would it let its inventory fall? Well, simple, it's going to stop ordering as much stuff and let its inventory start drawing down. And that makes perfect sense until you see what's happening now. And of course, it changes your big picture because notably the trend is pretty consistent as new orders fall there's a lag in inventories going down it makes perfect sense but now look new orders are crashing at one of the fastest rates in history and look at where inventory levels are headed they're headed higher and as you're about to see they're going even higher than that now if you're concerned that Burry is going to be right in the second quarter is going to lead to a disastrous for the economy and even the stock market going down further we well, shouldn't be there's one strategy that hedges deflationary recessions that's portfolio shield i'll put a link up here in the corner and description below because as you're about to see this inventory story it's going to be a big part of the recession as we see later this year here we go again record container ship traffic jam as backlog continues to build this headline from zero hedge if you only look at los angeles and long beach the largest container import gateway in america you think shipping congestion is drastically reduced the number of ships waiting there has fallen to 26 from a high of 109 in january but in fact north american port congestion has just re-entered record territory the offshore traffic jam is once again as bad as it's ever been in January and February, when North American congestion previously peaked, there were just under 150 container vessels waiting off the coastlines. Two thirds were in the Los Angeles Long Beach queue. And as of Thursday morning, there were 153, the majority off East and Gulf Coast ports, Whereas earlier, the West Coast pilot was centralized, highly publicized, and relatively easy to track. Today's ship queue is more widely dispersed, attracting less attention. And what that means is we're going to see inventories building up. So all these container ships that are coming off load, coming out of Asia predominantly, lots of goods needing to be unloaded and are going into warehouses onto shelves at a time when we don't need that. And what happens then when, of course, retailers and wholesalers can't move inventory, that means a discounting comes, prices go down, and inflation goes with it. Burry goes on to say the anticipates resulting slump in consumer spending, coupled with retailers slashing prices, which would make a lot of sense to get rid of the excess inventory that's only going to get bigger. It will reduce inflation and sap economic growth later this year. Moreover, Burry has predicted lingering shortages of unskilled and semi-skilled workers, which he expects to contribute to higher long-term inflation. Now, the last one, well, we're going to challenge that a little bit because I think we're going to see people come back to the workforce and what we're going to look at is this chart of the four-week moving average of initial unemployment claims in blue set on a log scale against the consumer price index on a year-over-year rate of change and in the past you'll notice the two were fairly in sync but that started to change and now let me invert the consumer price index because what i want you to see is that claims go up well then inflation then falls again shown inverted here so as more people leave the workforce because they lose their jobs inflation goes down as you see showing and again inverted here and why is that happening well it happens because unemployment benefits Benefits are less than what people make when they have less money to spend of course that means they're going to consume less and prices have to come down the sign boss is also known for inadvertently contributing to the memory stock frenzy by investing in game stock taking short positions against elon musk tesla and kathy wood's flagship arc fund last year and tweeting bleak warnings that rampant speculation skyrocketing asset prices are inevitably followed by painful market crashes and he is right because when we look again at new orders from the philly fed and this is again a predictor of where things are going and we overlay the wilshire 5000 price index 
on a year-over-year -year rate of change. We see the stock prices are heading down. And while investors remain bullish right now, if all of this inventory that we're seeing off the coast of the East Coast is coming to stores and to wholesalers and warehouses, that means new orders are going to collapse even more and take stock prices down even further. And of course, when we overlay four week moving average of initial claims, the picture starts to be a little clearer because now we're going to invert new orders. And as you see new orders going down again showing up here because they're inverted initial claims go higher it simply means that as stores need fewer workers as warehouses need fewer workers because inventory isn't moving well they get laid off demand goes down and the cycle just starts to snowball from there and as we look to our chief strategist jeff snyder he opines on of course the unemployment data from last week that came out yesterday and he says for another couple of weeks including the large upward revision of the previous week the pattern for the labor market is the wrong one this direction as well as the timing for it of late march is consistent with the initial treasury curve inversion and other data sources all pointing to a potential real economy inflection it was likely that inflection he says which produced the first half of the year's technical recession if only as a warm-up for what still lays beyond 2022's second half as jeff i and michael burry are all believing that something is going to get much worse later this year now if you want to read more about jeff's research mine and tracy shoe charts our energy and materials expert there's a link to markets insider pro in the description below it's currently free sign up next report out on monday i'm steve van meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now